G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, the market continues to go lower again. Now we're down into the $52,000 range and just how low will we go? We're going to have a look at the charts uh, in a minute and it'll you know, show some things that might be of interest to you. I think they're very, very interesting. But before we get into that, let's have a look. Look, $1.6 trillion. So that's the entire market cap just kind of holding on to there. But Bitcoin market cap has dipped under 1 trillion. So that really holds up the majority of the space in all fairness. And look, I'm thinking we possibly could go lower, but it's just so hard to tell. I mean, the weekend's here, so yes, most likely we probably will go lower. But, you know, again, every time you think something is going to happen with Bitcoin, you know, every now and then it'll just do something that'll, you know, prove you completely wrong and look it's done that to me on a number of times and that's the thing you need to remember nobody and i repeat nobody truly knows what bitcoin's going to do if they did know what it was going to do they would own all of it by now because they just would have outsmarted everyone else and they're not going to get uh you know somewhere and tell everyone exactly what's going to happen either they're going to try and can you know get as much bitcoin as they can but then if, if one person owned basically nine-tenths of the Bitcoin, hardly anyone would want to touch it. So we need to remember that. But all right, let's have a look. Bitcoin dominance, 58%. ETH dominance really dropping down to 11%. Gas prices, 132. We can see there's a lot of red over here, and particularly in the last 24 hours. A little bit of green there in the last hour, but yeah, again, I mean, it's... Sorry, I think I said it was Friday before. It's Thursday here in Australia, but we're getting close to the weekend. So really, the weekend sort of starts Friday. We generally see a correction start sometime around about sort of tonight, Thursday night here in Australia. And we see it right through to kind of Monday afternoon, Monday morning here in Australia because it's 24 hours ahead of other places. So 52,000, it's a pretty important level. We're going to have to wait and see whether that can hold. Look at Chainlink dropping down even further. I know a lot of people are probably scared, but for me, I'm just seeing a great buying opportunity. Now, don't get me wrong. Do I think Chainlink right at this price point is the best buying opportunity? No, but I do still think it's a good buying opportunity. And, you know, you need to get out there and have a look at the charts, try and find out where you think the best buying price is. But, I mean, Chainlink was, it was like 30 bucks. It's now down to $24. Could it go lower? Absolutely, but still, no one knows exactly where it's going to bottom out. All I see is it's at a 20% discount from where it's been, and it's a 7% discount on where it was 24 hours ago. Again, I'm not saying it's a, this is the price you need to buy in at, but you know, the smart money buys when it's red in a bull market. In a bear market, they've already sold and they're waiting for it to bottom out, but in a bull market, and if you think we're still in a bull market, this is probably not a bad buy-in price. I don't know if it's the best, but geez, it's 20% down where it was seven days ago and probably even down more from where it was only a couple of weeks ago. So that's the things that we need to look at. But let's have a look. A lot of red here. Is anything pumping in the last 24 hours? I'm sure there's going to be something. There we go. Pundi X just continues to go. I'm kicking myself. Again, I've learnt my lesson. You know, if you buy something... Uh, just hold eventually it's going to do something again never financial advice just my personal opinion every sort of thing has its well not everything that's not true but you know most things in the top 100 at least they're going to have their time where they're going to really really shine and i should have held on to pundi x i think that's one of the coins i sold at a loss i only sold a few at a loss voyager so making a bit of a recovery it's still down over seven days uh harmony Filecoin still doing all right, so that's nice. BitTorrent continuing to move on up. Quantum Pancake Swap. So there's a couple of gains, but look, nothing really too major. That's not bad from that's not bad from Voyager, uh, and that's quite good from Pundi X. But what about losses? We know there's been some losses. We saw a bit of red there before. What's really got hit the hardest in the top 100 and in the last 24 hours, anyway? Right, IOTA getting smashed. Theta Network absolutely being hammered. Still up 50% from the last seven days, but down 24%. Uh, Phantom, uh, same thing. It, it pumped quite well for a while there, so of course it's going to pull back. But again, you know, 15%, 
that's a reasonable loss. Anything under it's not too bad. And, you know, again, like BitMax token, if you've lost 15% but you're still up 40% over the last seven days, that's not so bad. Now you just need to ask yourself, you know, am I going to hold through this or am I going to sell and try and buy in at a lower price? You know, I don't like to do too much of that kind of uh, stuff. I'd rather just buy low. But yeah, trying to, you know, sell and buy back in constantly, that that's a hard thing to do. Uh, and for me, I just look to buy in when it's low, not so much try and sell at the high point and then buy back in at the low point. That's just really hard. On a day-to-day -day trading or even kind of week-to-week, -week, maybe month-to-month -month thing, that's pretty hard. I just simply look to buy the dips and then again, once I think the market's getting towards the end of it, then I'm just looking to scale out. And I've told you that before. But look, the losses, nothing too substantial. I mean, nothing over 20%. So, you know, nothing awful. But then in the gains, there wasn't anything too amazing either. So we're really still just kind of ranging about. And yeah, let's have a look at the charts anyway and see if there's something that might tell us where the market's going to go. Because really, if you look at the Bitcoin market, it's going to give you a good indication of what the rest of the market might do. Nothing guaranteed, but generally, Bitcoin is the leading factor. So let's go over. All right, here's Bitcoin. It's forming a new chart. So this has been broken. This was the line. If we broke this, it was bearish. So it's been broken. So what we can do is we can now get rid of that line. We don't need that. That's now invalid. And now, this is the bear trend bearish sort of trend anyway not like full bear market but we can see it's bounced off here once kind of bounced off here and look what we have here see this green line this is our 50 day moving average if we zoom out a little bit we have come and bounced off this 50 day moving average a few times and as long as we stay above it we haven't touched it for quite some time except for back here but when we have, it's basically bounced off it. So that's what I'm looking for now. This is basically right on the money at the moment. So about 50,000. Now we can see we've got a little bit of support here. It's sort of the 40, what is it, 49,000. We can almost round it off at $50,000. This is a little bit above $50,000, sort of 50,500. And that's almost where uh, it's bouncing off at the moment. Again, it almost wicked down and touched that. So this is going to be key at the moment. Will the 50-day moving average hold or are we going to lose it? Because if we lose it, and it's not the end of the world, but then we're maybe going to come down to here. And again, this would be pretty scary for a lot of people. The $41,000 mark, the 100-day moving average. Now again, we looked at the 21 exponential moving average the other day and that was around about 38,000. And look what we have here. So it's just below the 100 day moving average, but there is a bit of confluence here. It's been kind of resistance before, and then it has been support before as well. So 21 uh, weekly exponential moving average is down around about 38,000. The 100 day moving average is around about 41,000. So for me, if we lose this, 50 day moving average, I really do think it's going to get bought up somewhere in amongst here, in between the 50 and the 100 day moving average. But what we need to keep in mind is numerous times through the last bull market, not numerous, but at least a couple, I think it was maybe three or four times, Bitcoin came down and bounced off the 200 day moving average. So I can tell you right now, if Bitcoin made it down to 27,000 right now, people would be absolutely losing their minds. Me, I'm just buying that dip. Because even if we are going into the next true sort of bear market, I know that it, I just have to hold long enough, like i.e. another four years, and we'll be well and truly above 27,000. Again, I would have already been buying down here, and yes, it's going to hurt if I buy in at sort of 40,000, and it goes way down to maybe 15, 10, or 7,000. But again, I've been through a cycle or two already now. I know I just simply have to hold for longer. And it means that I've timed it wrong and I'll just simply accept that, particularly with the alts. What can you do? I didn't time it right last time. I simply held through it and the Bitcoin that I bought back in 2017 is already worth you know, near 10, no, not 10 times because I bought it at around about $8,000, but about you know five times more than what it was back then. So... For me, I know I've just got to hold. It's the altcoins that are the scary part because Bitcoin is not going to retrace, you know, 95% anymore other than, 
you know, from the top, if you bought right at the 62,000, it could. I haven't bought any Bitcoin for quite some time. I've been getting into alts. But if it was to, you know, pull back to maybe, you know, $12,000, $15,000 from here, I would still be in profit. It's just the alts that would really, really hurt me. Same with Ethereum. I'd still be in profit, but I would have lost a lot. I bought uh, most of my Ethereum back around kind of the $250 mark. I did buy it cheaper. Uh, I did buy it higher, but majority of it is kind of around that $250 mark. So it'd really have to lose a lot for me to lose money there. Again, it'd just be the alts that'd really kill me because I've been buying alts sort of all throughout this. So if I'm wrong, they're what is going to really hurt me if I've got that wrong. But again, so we're bouncing almost perfectly off that 50-day moving average at the moment. I think there's definitely a good possibility that this will break over the weekend and so we start to come lower. And again, I think we definitely probably test this kind of 50-ish uh, $1,000 level. That may break, but I just I find it hard to believe that we're going to go below this kind of $46,000, $45,000 range. But again, I always have it in the back of my mind, what if? So again, I'm not throwing everything I have at Bitcoin at 46000 but I can tell you if it gets down to that, I am putting a reasonable amount of money into it because I just think it's going to bounce somewhere between the 50 and the 100 if we lose the 50-day moving average and particularly if this kind of $50,000 mark right here doesn't hold, then I think we're going to get somewhere down and around here. And I just don't know exactly where. So for me, $45-ish thousand dollars, I would definitely be making a move on Bitcoin and Ethereum and all sorts of other altcoins. Uh, but again, really, I wouldn't be too worried unless we drop down below 27,000. And yep, again, most people will be selling and freaking out once Bitcoin breaks, you know. The 50-day moving average will scare a few people, 100%. The 100-day moving average will definitely scare people. And if this 38 sort of thousand dollar level, so the 21-week exponential moving average, if that doesn't hold, then yeah, people will panic. And it's that kind of self-fulfilling uh self-fulfilling prophecy it will just naturally dump lower but i think most of the the smart money will be buying heavily at around about this point if not a little bit before i think bitcoin would be hard to get below thirty thousand. not saying impossible anything's possible but really thirty thousand. yeah i think yeah, I just I don't think it's able to do that just yet. Particularly the twenty-one uh, exponential moving weekly moving average that is, you know, it, it'd be the cycle would have changed if it was to go below that. But look, who knows? Let's move on anyway. Some interesting news here. So IOTA partners with Cartesi to strengthen DeFi use cases. Right, very interesting. The chain agnostic layer two infrastructure, Cartesi, has partnered with IOTA Foundation to expand the use case of DeFi gaming and NFTs. Additionally, both parties aim to serve as the bridge between traditional technology solutions and blockchain. Look, this is really what's needed. We need to find ways to get old traditional finance uh, in with the new school finance. And, and look, it is going to happen eventually. It's just going to be a really slow burn. There's still you know, somewhat sceptical, you can tell, because the, the big banks haven't all bought into Bitcoin. They're just buying uh, things that are surrounding the uh, infrastructure itself, not Bitcoin itself. So really, it's not until they actually adopt Bitcoin themselves as part of their um, wealth retaining strategy, you know, their uh, storage, the way they store their uh, finances, then that's really, you know, we're not quite there yet. Once they start to do that, the big banks are using Bitcoin themselves. That's when we know we've really made it. And with the price uh, reduction at the moment, again, that just feeds into their narrative that it's too unstable and all the rest of it. And look, in the short term, Bitcoin is definitely too unstable for that kind of uh, store of value was the word that I was looking for. And so the big banks and, you know, other than a few businesses who are just you know, again, MicroStrategy, Tesla and that, who can handle the volatility and the ups and downs. The other businesses can't, particularly traditional finance. They're just not putting that much money into Bitcoin at the moment. They're, uh, they're putting money into the infrastructure, things that are using it, the gateways and the bridgeways and things like that, because they just use the dollars. They're not using Bitcoin at the moment. But, 
in the future, I do believe they will be using Bitcoin. And once big banks and institutions like that are actually using Bitcoin themselves, not just kind of, again, selling the stuff that uses it or investing in the stuff that uses it, they are investing in it. That's when we know we've made it. Moving on. All right, Goldman Sachs files for a Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. Very, very interesting. They're not the only ones, though. There's other companies out there that are doing it, and I think it's only a matter of time. Now, somebody did mention something in my comments the other day about, you know, does the fact that the Bitcoin options are running out on Friday have anything to do with this price fluctuation at the moment? In my opinion, yes. Over the last couple of sort of months, every time the options are about to run out, we have a sell-off right before it. But then it starts to make another move back up. So I suspect that's what's uh, happening at the moment. But no guarantees, no one really knows, but based on what's been happening over the last few months, that is how things are kind of playing out. So again, the options run out on Friday, so there's a bit of a sell-off, and then the new options start uh, on Monday, and I think we, it, it's possible we go up higher. It's hard to know. I think we just are at that point where 60,000, you know, that was triple the old sort of benchmark. A lot of people have taken profits. Now the smart money, they're still buying it, but a lot of you know the new money again they're getting shaken out. If particularly if they bought at sixty thousand, they're probably already sold. Uh, and if they bought at fifty thousand and now it's getting close to fifty thousand, you know they're probably freaking out and selling because they don't want to lose money. They're happy to you know at least take hold a little bit of profit. Yeah, and that's just the way it is. That's what I think is going on at the moment. I don't think too many big you know institutions and that are really selling too much at all. But they may be selling a little again. Could you blame Tesla for selling a little bit of their Bitcoin? They say they're not, but you know, regardless, let's say they are. They bought it at like 30 something thousand. So they've almost doubled their money. I think 37,000 was the price that they bought their Bitcoin. So if they sold a little bit at, you know, 50 something thousand, then fair enough, they've made some money. And again, it's the same with all the other people. If you've bought Bitcoin, I bought Bitcoin at eight thousand sort of four hundred dollars. I sold 10% uh, of all my Bitcoin at like $47,000. You have to get some of that money back. So if there is a big crash, then, you know, you can buy in cheaper. And again, if Bitcoin gets, you know, right down into the kind of low $40,000 mark, I'm using that money that I made to buy back in. But again, I won't be chucking all my money at it. I really think the, the money that I got from the 10% of my crypto at that $47,000 mark, I will be holding on to that until the next bear market. That's my plan at the moment. We'll wait and see if that pans out. Moving on, right, Bitcoin miners, they hodl as institutions continue to accumulate. So again, it's the smart money they're not selling at the moment and the on-chain data suggests that, but again, on-chain data can be a little bit skew if so we need to be careful and take it with a grain of salt. So the demand from institutional investors for Bitcoin continues to expand while Bitcoin miners have halted selling and started hodling instead. They don't want to sell while it's going down. They're holding. They're waiting for it to start to rally back up. And they know that by doing that, there's going to be less and less Bitcoin available. And so naturally, as it starts to get bought back up, the prices will rise. Whereas if they just keep, you know, say they're mining 100 Bitcoin a week. If they keep pushing 50 to 60 of those Bitcoin out there and the market is dried up a little bit, the, the market will just go lower if they reduce the amount of Bitcoin that is being available to sell and the market is slowly starting to get bought back up again by institutions and just everyday investors, the price will start to go up again. They're not silly. They, they understand how it works and they sell when it's appropriate for them to do so and they hold when it's appropriate for them to do so. And at the moment, they know if they don't put as much out there uh, to be sold, the price is just naturally going to go up. It will get to a point where everyone goes, yes, I am happy to buy. This is a great price. And again, I think that's going to happen around the kind of forty six to $50,000 range, somewhere in and amongst there. All right. Hedge fund manager Ray Dalio says good probability of a US Bitcoin ban. Rubbish. Absolute garbage. Everything that's gone on with Bitcoin at the moment, why would America ban it? It just... They'd be shooting themselves in the foot. So much stuff is happening. This is literally somebody who is just trying to create FUD and drive down the price. They're, again, we've already looked in the last uh, slide there, or the last 
page institutions are buying bitcoin they say these kind of things to create fud and i guarantee you they would be buying it that's just the way it works billionaire hedge fund manager you don't think that they're buying up this dip at the moment again yesterday we brought uh brought to you information that grayscale's bitcoin trust in the last you know again they were saying it was being sold at a discount not that long ago but it was also being bought at you know crazy amounts that's what's happening he knows exactly what he's doing it's not going to be banned if it was going to be banned they wouldn't be investing in it whatsoever and i can guarantee you they have this is literally classic fud and this stuff happens every single cycle it's the same kind of stuff it's going to be banned uh you know there's some kind of chinese fud that goes on uh, you know, governments are going to regulate the absolute crap out of it. And, you know, and, you know, there's always these kind of FUD things that go on throughout every cycle. And so far, they've never changed. It doesn't happen. But China's not going to ban it. There's too much money in it. They've got all these, you know, billionaire uh, miners over there. And the government gets some of that money. They're not going to get rid of it. And America is exactly the same. There's ETFs and all sorts of stuff being approved why would they now go ahead and ban it it would make absolutely no sense to do that it'd be ridiculous this is just complete fud don't fall for this kind of garbage and again this is not coin telegraph feeding you garbage i'm sure he's really saying it don't fall for the crap that ray dalio says they know exactly what they're drawing doing they are buying your bitcoin getting you to panic and go oh my god that's going to be banned so i better sell now and they're snapping it up it is not going to be banned. Not a chance in hell. All right. Markets Pro delivers up to 15, uh, 1,500% return uh, as quant-style crypto analysis arrives for every investor. So 41 of the 42 trading strategies tested by Market Pro are currently beating Bitcoin's investment returns and 36 of them are winning against an evenly weighted basket of top 100 altcoins. All right, that's very interesting. So maybe this has all got uh, something to do with it as well. So in the months since Coin Market, oh, sorry, Coin Telegraph Markets Pro launched, uh, bridging professional crypto market intelligence to every investor, the platform has helped hundreds of early subscribers to better understand the opportunities and threats inherent in the world of crypto investing and trading. So this kind of stuff is all good, but eventually somebody you know people get together and they start to counter trade it and then it just simply doesn't work so you know for me yeah just be very very careful when you're getting other people to invest your money i'm, I'm not saying that's a bad idea sometimes you need smart people but eventually something will come and break this system uh, and outdo it so it's good now but will it last forever i'm not sure i like to you know kind of bet on myself most of the time in all fairness and I'm, I'm not saying this doesn't work, but will it last forever? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And look, again, I could be wrong. And look, for, for a majority of people out there, you probably should have uh, some someone else at least assisting you with how to invest your money. But just be careful when you let other people do it for you. You know, they have their own agendas. They're just trying to make sure that they get money from you. They're not necessarily trying to make sure that you become an absolute millionaire. They want to make themselves an absolute millionaire. That's just the way it works. So, yeah, be warned. But look, if it is uh, bringing back those kind of returns, then congratulations. Well done. All right, Fidelity. So here we go. They also want to launch its own Bitcoin ETF, and Fidelity are massive. The financial service giant is seeking approval from the SEC to launch a Bitcoin exchange-traded fund uh, per a new filing. Now, look, there have been so many of them out there. I just I think it's impossible that, you know none of these get up i couldn't imagine i think the sec is going to have to endorse some of these and there'll probably be a couple you know maybe three or four of them will get endorsed uh and then we'll really see what bitcoin's going to do you know will the etf be the the thing that you know pushes it to the mainstream and finally everybody can get into it or you know was that all just hype and it never really does too much for the bitcoin price because that's what these etfs are it is literally going to bring the traditional markets into the space but yeah still too many questions out there for us to really know exactly what's going to happen but my gut feeling is once these get launched uh, you know it'll push the bitcoin price up they will be good for it but yeah too hard to know I, I don't have a definitive answer for you i'm hoping that they live up to the hype and 
yeah, push Bitcoin, you know, to that next level. But maybe they don't for whatever reason. There could be something that is just unforeseen uh, and they have a bit of a counteractive price. And again, maybe they try and push the price a whole lot lower to, again, shake everybody out. So hard to know. So hard to know. All right, look, that's all the stories from me. And like I said, we'll go back to here lastly. It's, this 50-day moving average has been a pretty good time to buy in for quite some time. Will it hold? Oh, I, I don't know. It's it's looking like it might at the moment. But again, we've got the weekend to come and we've got this downward kind of channel here. I really will be looking for this more here you know that fifty thousand dollar mark kind of you know on the nose will that hold and if not the 21 week uh exponential moving average which is around about the thirty eight thousand dollar mark and again we've got a bit of confluence down here so really if that broke yes i would be a little bit concerned but i wouldn't think the kind of you know the whole market had excuse me uh been in a bear cycle that I just hadn't noticed until we really breached here and it'd have to be a closing candle below here we've definitely wicked below the 200 day moving average in a bull market before but we've never had candle closes go below on the daily that is you could probably find minutes and 15 minutes and four hourlies that did but on the daily we haven't all right well that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another if you're on that gain train congratulations to you there really wasn't a whole lot gaining in the top 100 anyway but if you've outsmarted the market and maybe with that market pro stuff, congratulations and I'll see you next time.